Remember seeing this interesting tweet where the person said, See how Ira Star is everywhere making people talk about her and her album, but ever since Thames announced her album, she went back inside and is busy playing Ludo with her manager. Now that was funny. It's a funny tweet, and it was done about a month ago. But was he right? Whoever tweeted this, were they right? What has Thames been doing since her album announcement and is playing Ludo part of her launch strategy? Well, inside this video, I'll do a critical analysis of Thames' album launch using the marketing mix of product, price, place, and promotion, starting with product. To understand Thames' approach to her launch is to first understand her product. I'll say Thames has this unique style. It's not something that we see all the time because what she does is that she has this soulful melody. But then when you listen to her relics, most of the time they have this introspection in them. She's very, she accepts, you know, her language, her accent. She's not trying to change it. In fact, you can hear it throughout her music. So her style is very, very distinct. So if you put that in mind, and now you look at this new album, Born in the Wild, which is her first studio album, and you look at the theme, you feel that she's doing the same thing, but in a new way. And here's what I mean. So Born in the Wild, when I looked at it, I don't know if she said it, but from my understanding, it looks like she's going to talk about her experiences and this metaphorical wilderness of her life before the fame. So basically, she's going to tell us about her journey before the fame. And the team is smart. I'll say it's smart because it connects to listeners on a personal level. We all love stories, especially stories about overcoming challenges and personal growth. We love that. Plus, we don't really know Thames that much. I don't know if it's because we don't know her or we don't understand her. And I'm not among the we. I think I understand her uh, a little bit, but I feel like most people don't understand Thames. So by sharing her journey before the fame, she's going to invite her audience to see the real person behind the music, which can create like an emotional bond. And also she's doing this with 18 tracks. So the product is 18 tracks. And I see that she's got guest features from Ashake and J. Cole. And she's got song titles like Voices in My Head, Hold On, Born in the Wild. So it looks like the product is going to be something that will solidify Thames. And different people can relate to this theme in various ways. So this is how I see it. Fans might find inspiration in her story. They will actually find inspiration in her story depending on how much she shares. And then they can see how she navigated through her wilderness in codes and how she reached success. So it's going to be inspirational for fans. But for non-fans, this will be a clever way of Thames using storytelling to build a brand identity. So what I mean by that is, depending on how much she shares about her journey, people may even do the promotion for her without even realizing it. We love gossip. Gossip is one of those things that spreads every day. If you want to spread an idea fast, do it through gossip and storytelling. So people listening to the album might come out with snippet or bit saying, oh, Tem shared this, she said this about her life, she said this, which will prompt other people to go and listen to the music themselves to verify that depending on the price. Now, speaking of price, in the music industry, pricing for an album can vary. It depends on several factors. So it includes the format of the album, digital, physical, CD, vinyl, the distribution channels and the perceived value by the audience. Now, I know Thames' album is set to release on June 7th, 2024, but I couldn't find the pricing for a different format. So if anybody knows that, you can drop it in the comments for me. And for plays, I don't think we will talk much about that because it will be the normal way of selling it on Spotify, Apple Music. You know, these platforms are accessible for everybody including her African audience, her American audience, her U European audience. So it's a convenient way for fans to listen and promote the music and do all of that in there. So people will be doing the numbers and, you know, all of that. Now, speaking of promotion, 
that tweet was funny. And I, I don't think I shared the whole tweet because the other stuff wasn't relevant. So despite what the tweet said, Tebs has been promoting her album. It's just that she's been doing it in her own laid-back, low-profile type of approach. We've seen her go on to Jimmy Fallon. She's done Tiny Desk. She was on Curtis YouTube. And she's been tweeting. Tweeting. She's been doing her own way of doing things, laid-back and chill. Now, do I think she could be doing more for her launch promotions? Absolutely. But do I also think she can? She will sell more no matter what? Absolutely. Her fan base is large. She's going to sell. People love Thames, especially the Americans. People love Thames out here. So we will just have to wait and see where the total sales will be. But in conclusion, while the launch strategy of Born in the Wild may be seen as understated compared to others, it's tailored to Thames' persona. That's just who she is. So we will have to wait and see if this strategy resonates with her audience and achieves the desired impact upon her album release. And depending on when you watch this video, remember, Born in the Wild is out now. Go stream it and subscribe to the channel.